this place or we'll be late. Make a left on Astrology Avenue. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant right. It should be right here at 444 Spirit Way. Oh, turn, turn, turn. It looks like Renee. Yay, we're on time. The James and Kelly Show. Great, let's start the show. Okay, I'm still kidding. <laughs> Hi, James. Hi, Kelly. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we... Hi, everyone. We're giddy. We're giddy. We because had I've had no sleep. <laughs> He's had no sleep, but we just heard the funniest story. So it <laughs> it made us laugh. Well, and, hi, and we needed a laugh because the energy has good... been so intense. I, I called Kelly earlier today. I was like, oh, yeah. What is going on? Because it's like meteorites left. Yeah, and right. it, we're going to talk about that. It has been it's intense crazy. time. I mean, look at the world, right? I mean, it has really been. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Then there's that. Right. Then there's that. I mean, my gosh. But I think let's say hi to some people here. We've got, hey, Kyle Hodges. She says the funniest Rob. thing. She says, hi, James and Kelly. They should rename my little town to Wilting because it's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cute. <laughs> hi, everybody. Hi, hi Ruth. Roberta Kay. Mark Webb. Good to see you again. Puppy's keeping you up. Puppy's keeping me up. Puppy's oh, that's an understatement. killing me. <laughs> I wish they would just keep me up, but it's uh... <laughs> They're eating me alive because of my arms and legs, but they're all scarred and red oh. and bloody. And my oh. lips have been bitten on because they say nice kisses. They go, okay. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, I didn't tell you that, Kelly. Yeah. They're, they're no, miss that part. They're eating each other alive. And there was a bloodbath oh. the other day. And now they're oh. working on me, subject me. Oh. It's pretty funny. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty, pretty funny. Do they have like teeth that hurt? Oh, they're puppy teeth. They are sharpest as razors. They're really oh. sharp. Puppy teeth are very, very sharp. And it's like, and they're so, they know nothing but love. So, you know, you don't want to, it's all good behavior. I try to, you know, reinforce, I've never yelled at them. I've been done. So it's all positivity, but there's, they'll hear my voice being raised to just stop something. That's all they know. Tomorrow I'll bring them to training for um, a place that's been, been trained. Oh, Thank good. You, that's going to be a great, yeah. great day tomorrow. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a super day. Very, it will be. Beth. Balser Hi, from Lizette. From Arizona. I am um, Jeff, our friend Jeff and Debbie are in Arizona celebrating their 35th wedding anniversary. Wow. Wait, 39th. 39th. Cause I saw it. 39th. Wow. Well, happy anniversary Jennifer to you too. Renee Hassel. Yay. Hi Renee. That was a, we had a wonderful uh, event on Saturday to raise some money for Allison Gannon and Renee Hansel had a reading and that, that was, was really great. fun. That was great. Oh my gosh. Hi everybody. Hi, yes. Tommy. Let's see. Polish um, Locky. That's an interesting name. It's been Polish Locky. Huh. I know. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I, I, have a, I try to do really well by pronouncing the names because I'm. It's, yeah, that's a little tough. Um, hi, Sherry Dahl, Bill Bennett, Regina. Monica. Watching, hi, James. I'm like, oh, Bill Bennett from Australia. Hi, Bill. We did a movie together. Oh, that's wow. Right. You're in the editing room. Very good. Oh, <laughs> and you did a Bill. film on intuition, he says. <laughs> that's right. Exactly so right. Thank you, Bill, for that. Oh, gosh. Yes, having loads of fun with my puppies. This is true. Oh, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. <laughs> loads of exhaustion. I work at the same time and write a book, and it's all just very a lot at once. So. Oh, my gosh. It's I know pretty, it is. Pretty. Wow. So, Kelly, tell us what's going on in the world of the planets, because I'd love to know. Would you like to know? Okay. So to this this is going to be an interesting time for everybody. This month of June, yeah, June is a kind of a, there'll be some really good times, easier times, and then there'll be some intense times. I'm not sure exactly where I would categorize that for right this moment because oh, Saturn and Saturn. Oh my God. Well, Saturn is now retrograde. So, you know, you we talk about Mercury retrograde, but Saturn goes retrograde every year also. And when it goes retrograde, it goes into this retrograde goes until October 23rd. So Saturn is October the planet 23rd, October 23rd. So all the way between now and October 23rd and it's in Aquarius. So when Saturn retrogrades, Saturn is, it's about responsibility. It's about duty. It's about consequences in your life. Saturn is, or, or I should say, and it's about karma. It's and about Saturn, karma. It's about I karma. Always, yeah. And it's neither good nor bad. It just, what it does, its job 
and it takes its job very seriously, is to put you on your karmic path. So you're supposed to be here, and you're just, it doesn't matter. And here's the thing, interesting enough, this is about in Aquarius. And Aquarius is about new age, and it's about humanity. The thing yeah. about Saturn retrograde is it will bring us to a point to for learning. Saturn is all about learning. And so when, when I look at this from a, the lens of an Aquarius time, that it's going to be an Aquarius for all this time, about new age and humanity, it to me seems that it's going to be a great time to go back to learn anything that you need to do for your life's work. Because Saturn is about life's work and what you've come to do. And I know that there are a lot of um, intuitives out there that we'll talk about intuition today, of course. There are a lot of mediums out there and people that might even be thinking about mediumship. The reason I think this is really important is because as the world gets so intense, as you can see every day, James, there's three or four shootings, it seems a day, right? And I mean, I know for me, I could work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's just simply not enough. You know, we're going to need good mediums out there. We're going to need good therapists out there. But I do know, and you only do this, I think, once a year, you do mediumship one. Is that about right? I don't remember a year, two years, maybe, maybe three years it's been, because I concert in two or three, but I'm doing mediumship one, which is really interesting because... Not to interrupt you, Kelly, but I, I was no. watching, I met someone last week and they said they had a reading and they became into this whole world through a reading by someone and in mediumship. And I was I said, send me, can you send me a copy of the reading? Yeah. And they did. And um, I was very under impressed. I was, it was just, it was a really yeah. mediocre medium reading. Mm-hmm. And, and to me, um, it was question and answer. And the medium should never do that. The only reason to answer the question is for validation. Yeah. And you can tell when someone's in that space of mediumship and confidence because they're right there and they're grounded, they're into it. Like we had such, and I didn't even tell you that Saturday was, you, you blew me away, Kat. <laughs> you were oh, so wait, incredible Saturday. Wait, wait, thank event. you. Was like, but, wow. No, but let me just say this though. I have to say this. So you're <laughs> like, no, you're like the best <laughs> tennis player in the world. So for me to play tennis with the best tennis player in the world, I have well, it only can elevate my game. Or listen to this: I either sink or swim. And I, well, you, I was, you went pretty far, my friend. You, you really you. were amazing. Thank you. Amazing. That's thank you. Well, so were you. All of a sudden, you yelled out and peaches. Peaches. I don't peaches even remember what it was. The dog. The dog. <laughs> I was like, oh my god! No, those readings were fantastic. But I mean, that's what, yeah, that's what type of mediumship I want to. I'm yeah. training people in because you have to really know the right basic work. You're the so, excellent teacher for that. Excellent. I think I'm pretty good at that. Excellent, excellent. And, because and, what you do is you get people out of their head and you get them right. where they're supposed to be. To the heart, you know, head to heart. To the head to heart and in a grounded way. I mean, yes. but we're going to need this. And so you're doing this. Renee, would, would you put that date up again? Because I think it's I'm next doing, week. Uh, yeah, free seminar. And uh, it's just an open this, this call about Mediumship One. It's um, June 14th, Flag Day, everyone, Flag Day. And it's just going to be me sharing exercise about mediumship and talk about Mediumship One, the course. And uh, yes, yeah, it'll be a fun way. I'll do a lot of exercises. And yeah, it's, it's not, I do it every two years, maybe three years. It's, yeah, it's uh, not very often. So not if you very get a often, chance, but we but need it now. I just so. think we really need it now. I think that this is going to, this world is getting more intense. And by the way, the next several months, more intense and more intense. It's not like it's going to stop and everything's going to be easy again. It's really not. We have to, we have a lot to learn here. So Saturn, Saturn retrograde. retrograde mm-hmm. Kelly, Saturn retrograde and Aquarius, is that, wouldn't that also be the healing? Because Aquarius is a healer. Completely, be, completely. It'll put you on your end, path. And and the, and the possibility of the end of the war, maybe in that way? Well, I don't think so. I don't think nope. so. Nope. No. I don't. Would be, a good time. would be a good time, though. It would be a good time. Yeah. Saturn retrograde in Aquarius, right? And that's high-mindedness. It's, it's high-mindedness. High mindedness exactly. It. They're, yeah. Exactly. I, You know, this world is kind of in a funny place right now. It's in a very wonky, funky place. And I was thinking yeah. about that yesterday. Like that's not, you know, you learn with the axis and the world turning and spinning. Like there is no axis anymore. It just goes on its own, like it's rolling off. Oh the my place. God. It's so you just want to hold on for dear life yeah. sometimes, like, wow. right? Yeah. It's, it's like just, really when I was a kid, you were a kid. We went to like amusement parks 
through the barrel. Remember the barrel? You had to walk oh, through yes. the barrel? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. That's what it feels like. <laughs> oh, my right. God. That's a good one. See, right. To me, it feels like, remember those clowns that would just pop up and then you'd have to slam them? <laughs> yes. That's what it yes. feels like to me. It's like, whoa, okay, yeah. got another one down. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> anyway. So that's what we have to look forward to. And then next week, we'll talk about a little more astrology because it gets a little more uh, intense for next week. This week, please, God, it should be a little easier on some level. Yeah, and we can't answer everyone's in, in questions here, but we'll do the best we can. And tonight's about intuition. Yes. Uh, Kelly, how would, you, how would you define intuition? Okay, here's how I would define intuition, because I'm glad you asked. Intu <laughs> intuition is the ability to understand immediately without conscious reasoning. And it's sometimes explained as a gut feeling about maybe the rightness or the wrongness of a person or a place or a situation or an object. But it's, it's the ability to understand immediately something that's going on without without conscious thinking. You, you put on your therapist head right there. I can see that. I did. Therapist head. I wow. did. I like, did. <laughs> but it's, I love that that Virgo part of you. Um, yeah, and I, I say it's the it's voice of the soul. It's the voice of the yes. soul. It's that, that knowing this. It's, everybody has intuition. Everyone's born with a sixth sense. Um, we don't, everyone's born that way. It's an instinct that we have really in the womb, if you will, mm -hmm. telepathically connecting with our mothers. There's a connection there intuitively. And it's an, an instinctiveness. And it really is part of who we are. And I think yeah. children are very, very intuitive until, you know, seven, eight, nine, we start getting programmed by the adults and saying, this is the way you, we want it to be. And we yes. try to go what they want. and Literally, we know that well, they, what happens is pe they want to please their parents. And then people become the people, people pleasers, and they forget about that knowingness inside them. Exactly. Them. And, they, knowing, and they go to their heads. They, they go right into their, their heads. Reason, and they go, okay, I got to do this in order to be accepted or loved. And they go right, right. to their heads thinking, what do I have to do? And they forget right. about the heart self. And that's where your intuition is, that heart, that gut feeling. Oh, that right. total, that gut feeling is everything. You know, um, can, James, can you think of a time when you um, – did listen to your intuition? Well, kind of, yes, but in a weird way. It was, um, yes, kind of, really kind of weird. Okay. Okay. I don't know if you ever heard this story. No, tell me. Okay. So I was just in Los Angeles uh, when I first moved to Los Angeles in 1982, I guess it was. I was trying to break into the TV business for sitcom writing before any of the mediumship stuff. Uh, I was aware of it. And I had a 1968 Impala thing or a Lincoln Continental. It was an old used car. It was a, big <laughs> a big boat. Big boat. And I could have, it was, I think it was $600 when I bought it. And it was, um, I'm driving down um, La Brea Avenue and I get to Fountain La Brea. It was Saturday night at 12 o'clock. I'd gone out to a, a dinner or something or a club. I was like 26 years old or 25 or whatever it was. And all of a sudden, the car stopped. Now, the gas gauge didn't work. I didn't have a gas gauge. So I didn't realize I had no gas in the car. And I was right in the middle of La Brea Avenue, everyone. It's a big Avenue. Oh, it's, it's huge. It's one of the biggest in LA. Yeah. And, and I got out of the car. And, oh, I guess I ran out of gas. So I went into the state. Believe it or not, I'm sure Spirit obviously guided this. There was a gas station on the corner. So I just it stopped in front of the gas station. So I went to get the gasoline. Okay. Um, and I, I got, the guy gave me it. And the, what happened was the, the gas tank was the back of the car, the very back. So you, I was kneeling down. I was kneeling down and it was 1230 at night. I opened up the license plate, behind the license plate was a gas. And I started putting in, I said, wait a minute, I got to get another nozzle and I don't feel safe here. Wait a minute, let me go back to that guy a second and get a cloth. I didn't feel safe. I go back toward this guy at 1230 at night in his gasoline station. And I was in here, bang. And I looked, and that car was up the sidewalk. Another car hit it. Oh and obviously, God. the person who was driving that car didn't look and see. If I was bent down, putting gas in that car. Oh, I my God, you would have blown up. But I had an intuition and an instinct. Like, i got to go. It's safe. And I want to get a cloth, but I don't feel safe. Let me get a cloth. I, I just need to go. I need to go. And it was, put, and it was my intuition. You know, the so soul it saved you. Know, it saved me. It yeah. saved me. And that's an extreme case. But, you know, yeah. every day we use intuition. And it's it's, yeah. it's just... It's that knowingness, and it's not thinking about it. Like you said, Kelly, it's a natural ability. It's a it's natural, natural ability. So I had a really interesting situation, too, in my 20s as well. I had a boyfriend for many years. His name was Rick. And for many, many years, we were together. And uh, he said to me one day, and this is when it really became very clear. He said, you, you don't think. You just do. You don't mm. think. And I said... And it wasn't necessarily a put down. It was, 
I understood. And I looked at him and I said, yeah, that's correct. And he said, but I think, he said, I think everything through. And I said, I realize that. I know that about you. And he said, I said, and I don't even know why I said this, but I said, do you ever want to get married and have children? Because intuitively I wanted to get married and have children. And he said, I have to think about it. And I said, <laughs> you have to think about it. I, he said, yes. I said, how long do you think it will take you to think about it? And he said, well, you know, it's a period of time. I have to think about it. And then I said, oh, Rick, it's okay. You, you don't have to think about it. And he said, I don't. And I said, no, 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 because I'm breaking up with you. I've thought about it. <laughs> and I knew it that exact, I knew it that exact minute. That this guy, if he got married, it would be in 30 years. And I could wait 30 years. But then what? Why would I wait for anybody else? So I, so here's what happened. Here's a really interesting part of that story. 30 years goes by. He marries somebody. He's 50 years old at this point when he gets married. He has three young children. He came to Holiday's wedding, my daughter's wedding. My daughter had already graduated from graduate school. She was already a doctor when she was getting married. And he wow. came to the wedding. And he said, I want to tell you something. He said, I'm dying. I have about two months to live. Wow. And he said, I'm sorry I never listened early wow. on because I'm leaving these three young kids. Is that an interesting story? So my intuition was so right on that if I waited around, I, this is a message to anybody that's waiting for somebody else. Yeah, it never <laughs> happened. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Listen don't to your intuition. It. Yeah. I was, you know, we always all have that experience. With, if I only listen to that small voice, that little voice within, if only the, I would have been in this place. And that happens to all of us. And it's oh. a matter of, yeah, it's, it's a matter of, you know, listening to it and take it, practicing and going with it. Because we always, all of us have that, oh, I should have done that. I knew, I knew it. I knew right. it. I knew, well, there's always going to be that. There's always and when you meet people, you know, they're good for you or they're bad for you, you know, right. at, church or at houses or well, places of work. You absolutely. And if you don't trust your gut here or your intuition, here's what's going to happen. Number one, you, you're you going to be people pleasing. You really right. you want to be people pleasing? Are you going to feel sorry for somebody? Or what is your gut saying? Number two, you're going to have trouble setting boundaries. So you want to be able to set boundaries. It's going to really help you with your intuition. Another thing, if you don't trust your gut, here's another thing. You that means you don't have a spark for life, James. You I know, you that. don't you don't have that spark of life. That, that means you're in that magic. That means you're not in your body. What are you doing? You know, where you, are you? Where are you? And intuition requires you to be in the body and also be present at the same time and be have joy and have pay attention. It requires that. And the last thing, if you don't trust your gut, you're going to have difficulty interacting with others. Period. But yeah, and I, I'd say difficulty in life. And, and, difficulty you know, would, in I, life. And I would sum, summation of that. The summary okay. of that, Kelly, is you get stuck. You're going to get stuck. You're going to get, get stuck. Oh my gosh. And you get stuck and you're going to be sitting there and be a victim and that, you know, people please are not, and you're going to be stuck. You're not going to grow. You're going to be you're stuck. Absolutely. You also learn trust when you're intuition. You learn about trusting. You learn about yourself. Right. You start having a relationship with that inner knowing of you. Right. You celebrate who you are. And I knew that was right. I felt that that's what happens. You And it builds. The more you do it, you know, intuition is like a muscle that you work out. Yes. The more you work it out, the stronger it gets. I tell people all the time when I, my school, I do this and a year for years now, you can practice your intuition every day. Yes. For instance, LA, we have a great one going around looking for a parking space. Where is that? <laughs> where you get an email from someone without knowing who they are. Try to envision what the email says before you open it. Uh, if you do get mail, uh, physical mail, try to intuit what it says or it's a bill or an invoice and you've never had it before, try to intuit what does it feel like as far as numbers, as far as the invoice. I was I told you this last week, I believe, Kay Ray. Remember I mentioned Kay Ray? Yes, yes. She's And I mentioned that book, The Psychic is You. And I love that she talks about that the gut center, the solar plexus, our psychic center, which it is, that's our seat of knowingness. Mm -hmm. And program, she talks about programs coming in. We're constantly receiving and giving out, receiving and giving out. And when you walk into a space, you'll receive the energy that's in that space. Whether it's a person, you'll receive their energy, that program. Right. And how are you feeling with that program? Right. And the more keenly aware of the feelings of program, then you can see it for what it is. And then you send it out. Then 
you send it out, judgment or whatever you want to call it, placing it in its proper position. So it's it's really we're constantly receiving and giving out all the time. It just signals. It's all oh, signals. It's constantly. Um, scientists believe that intuition operates on the right side of the of our brain. The, Correct. So I've always said I'm completely right brain, but also through our gut, our gut is the digestive system. It has new neurons in it as well. So it's really important that your intuition, you follow the gut. The gut is telling you something. I thought this was really interesting too. Steve Jobs said, he wrote a book and he said that intuition is a very powerful thing. It's more powerful than the intellect. In my opinion, yeah. it's had the biggest impact on my work. Oh, I agree. Well, I agree. I agree with that, but I agree with that. But let me overthink this. Um <laughs> But, you know, there's mental body, there's a spiritual body, so yeah. it, it, and the emotional body, physical body, so forth. But it is that one, to me, it's a seed of knowing, that seed of knowing this. It's that they all, anytime I think of intuition, I think it's the seed of the soul, the voice of the soul. But it's that part of you which has always been, always will be, and it guides It guides us. It's it's like um, you, the universe is, um, you know, uh, Ge our Geiger cat. It's our. It's um, like our. It's our a Geiger. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, like a, I yes. can't think of enough sleep. But you know, the, uh, a pitchfork, a, a tuning fork. It's our. Tu it's yeah. God's tuning fork. It's nature's. The universe's tuning fork. That's what I'm trying to say. And it's really so subtle, and no one should expect like it's all oh, now I'm getting this information. No, it's subtle and it's soft. It's gentle. It's yes. gentle. And if you can surrender to that gentleness and that sensitivity, and they call intuitive sensitives, of course, because it's that sensitive, subtle energy that you're yes. feeling. And if you overthink it again, you know, you won't pick it up. It's like very much like mediumship in a way. If you if you try too hard, yeah. you, it goes above you and below you, you won't get into it. And every medium is psychic, not every psychic is a medium. Right. Know that. So you can be very, very intuitive, but not be a medium. But every medium has to have a strong sense of psychic ability, intuitive ability. Mm -hmm. Right, Kelly? You Absolutely. Said? You have to have that. You have to be an intuitive to be to, uh, to, to be a psychic or to be a medium, but particularly to be a medium. What, Kay, Kelly, what do you think about, I just thought about this, this is very interesting, people's sense of self, uh -huh. that if they would more practice more of their intuition, they'd have a better sense of self. Oh, yeah. Or because, love of self. Absolutely. Because it would go to what you said earlier. It's uh, knowing thyself. If you know thyself, if you know yourself, your intuition is going to be right there. You're going to know yourself so well that you'll know what's going on. You'll 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 be able to help yourself move through and navigate life in such a better way. You won't you'll pick better. You'll you'll feel better. You'll have more joy. My, my grandmother grew up, she was an English, uh, well, well, really Welsh. And when I was a little boy, I used to go to her apartment in Jackson Heights. And he used to sit with her for, for um, hours. My dad worked in the city at, or a show, a TV, uh, very, uh, Broadway show. And I'd sit there at night and drop me off there and then take the subway into New York City, Manhattan. And I'd sit with her and she'd tell me things. And she, I'll never forget two of the things she told me. She said, she said love Shakespeare. And mm -hmm. she said, to thy own self be true. Oh. And I'll never forget that. She said, that will help you in years to come. You did, that'll help you live your life to their own self be true. And to, that and travel. You will learn the most of your life through travel and to be yourself. To their own self be true. Never try to be what someone else wants you to be, but be who you are. How old were you when she said that to you? Oh, I must have been seven or eight years of age. You grabbed onto that because yeah. boy, you have been true to yourself. I came in that way, I think. I came with a sense of self, I think. Yeah. I think it was survival. I, you know, I think I had to survive as a New York kid. But you were not a people pleaser either. No, no, you no. You weren't I, that. I, I really was more of a joyful kid in my own way. And I, I mean, mm -hmm. whether we're living there, here, everywhere, who knows? You know, the circumstances weren't great, but they weren't bad either. But it was just, I always had a sense of me. I could be in a tree and be very, very happy. I have a teaspoon. I'll never forget this. I had a teaspoon in uh, my house in Queens. And I used to go out, we had a very small property, and I used to go in the front yard, which was a disaster. And I used to go by the ivy, and I used to put a teaspoon in the ground and dirt, and I used to be so happy. And I used to say, one day I'm gonna have a big garden. <laughs> it's true, but that brought me so much joy connecting with the earth and watch the flowers, and it still does. It still does, of course. And, How did uh, that, but you had that, I you knew, Something was going to be better. I, I I knew there was a simple sense, and I think I was born the sense of 
something. And that I was, um, I remember when I was three years of age, this is wild, I, I, very wild. My mother was uh, walking me to nursery school, three years of age. And I remember going up the street, Corporal Kennedy Avenue, whatever it is. And um, this man came by and he talked to my mother. And he mentioned California. And I, and he walked by and I looked at my mother and said, I'm going to live there one day. I had no idea what California was. I had no concept of California, but I knew I was going to live there one day. And uh, yeah, pretty wild. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I also, when I was a little kid, on Saturday mornings when uh, the rest of the kids would be, uh, so my, my paper shredder just turned on by itself. Just, <laughs> if you hear that. I think it's your grandma. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know what's going to stop. But anyway. <laughs> So I always had that sense on a Saturday morning. Uh, so thank you, Grandma. Okay. It's oh, weird. So, uh, and I used to remember when kids were like playing Saturday mornings out and they're playing out in the street. And every Saturday I'd ask to see God. Oh, I, I said that I knew, I knew inside me there was something, a knowingness, there was something connected. I knew this wasn't it. And I was a young kid, four or five years of age, six years of age. And I remember one morning, I wrote about this in my first book, Talking to Heaven. I asked to see God and a hand appeared through the ceiling. And it was just light, a luminous light. It really what it was. Yeah, even the movie, the Ted Dance movie that portrayed me, we, they, we brought Did this they put that in there? Yeah, they wow. put that in there. But it was really like, and I, I just had that sense of, oh, yeah, that's right. It was like, I remember it now. Yeah, that's right. That's all, that's all I need to remember. Oh, and, and it was almost God. like that was a reassurance and that knowingness. And it, it kind of, I don't say opened me up, but it was a reassurance, a validation. Yes. And that's one of the, yeah, that's what I, I Wow. Okay, let's read this. Paul Katz says, curious, something happened a few hours ago. It's my birthday. Happy birthday, Happy Paul. Birthday, Paul. I, today is a 666 day, which is interesting. Wow. I think June 6, 2022. It's a 666 day, wow. which actually is a, it's a good sign. It's not a bad sign. It's a very good sign. It means to reflect. So it's a good, it's a good thing. But anyway, he said, um, I was in my shower. Oh my God. And my shower door shattered spontaneously. I was minutes away from being in the shower. I kept delaying. If I had been, I would have been hurt more than I was. Just some scratches. Is it possible unconscious intuition can help us? Something kept me out of the shower. Some say glass shattering accidentally, like it's a sign of good luck. Superstitious, I know, but wondering. Oh, Paul, I think your guides got you out of that mess. Yeah, that's, I think spirit. I mean, that's like a that's a major one. Yeah, that was like the car one with me, the gas. Was the yeah. yeah, you were. And of course, on your birthday, you know, they're, they'd be around even more so and, and getting a message across. Well, that was a message. Oh, funny. You got important things to do, Paul. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, more things to do for sure. Oh, my gosh. Um, well, I have some tips for intuition, James. I've got some tips okay. here. Should we talk about some tips? Yeah. So yes. if you guys are interested in developing your tips, as James said, this is a muscle. This is a muscle. You want to really treat this as something that you're learning about yourself and you're developing. So the first thing to do, and which is what we always talk about almost every day, James, is meditate. Meditation okay. is everything because it's going to it's going to help you to um, if your energy is scat scattered, it's going to help bring your energy together here for you. So meditation is a really great way, even if it's just five minutes a day, if you can do that, um, it's going to help you with growing your intuition. So another thing is taking a chance at following your gut instinct. So if you have a strong instinct or something, um, try it, you know, follow that exactly. advice, see exactly. it. Practice it. Try it. And, you know, if it doesn't, it doesn't. But it, try it. I mean, trying something every day with your instinct is everything. It builds that muscle. It yeah. builds the muscle. And that's the whole thing. You want to build this muscle. Yeah. So I love this one, James. Start doing daily body scans. Oh, I never heard that one. Yeah, okay. it's many of us are used to overriding the way we physically feel and we just, you know, like push through from one situation to the next. But make a practice of really acknowledging uh, the way your body feels and what it's telling you. So if you sc scan your body, see what you're holding. Are you holding good sensations, bad sensations? Well, my sex oh, my gosh. Oh boy, we've got a lot going on over there. <laughs> shattering. Whoa, whoa. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> it just because that happened to Paul doesn't have to happen to you. <laughs> well, I did say it was a six 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 day. It's a meteorite shower. It's a meteorite shower. It's quite a day. Um, but anyway, do a body scan because that might actually help you with your intuition too. 
you know, but, you know, when you do the body scan, Kelly, it's, it, 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 people should just sense it. Don't try to think about okay. it. Get yeah. the brain, go to the brain, the head to the heart. And, and I, I have learned also, if you want to go to the mirror and scan and, and you can still start with the chakras too, and sense what this feels like here, the, the third eye, and then go to the throat and feel the sensitive, the, the subtle differences, the throat chakra, the heart chakra. And they're very, very subtle, but try to get into that sense of sensing what it feels like. So, for instance, can I just jump in? Yes, Kelly? please. If everyone wants to do this. Wrap their hands together and just hold that your palms facing each other about six inches apart. And you can close your eyes if you'd like and very slowly bring the palms close to each other and then back like a accordion. But be, be, pay attention to the space in between the hands, the palms, and feel, if you will, the energy. So yeah. as close as you can to begin to feel like it's a little like... um energy going back and forth. It's like darts, if you will. And you can feel that and then bring it out and expand it. And you can tell how intense it is. You can just sense what energy feels like. And that's what we're talking about. That's the subtlety of intuition, that subtle feeling. So that's it. So when you scan your body, just sense how different the energy feels when you do that. And that's really the beginning of getting into that subtle, sensitive space. Oh, I love that. Well, we have a good question here. Hold on a second, James. We have a question from Wanda. She says, good evening. She said, can you please explain more about know thyself? Know thyself. Uh, well, know thyself is, is really, well, that was not from Shakespeare. It's a part of a poem there that goes on. But it, it just goes into under, know who you are. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think meditation uh, helps. Um, a sense of, I always tell people, sitting in the stillness of your being, which means what I tell my students to do is sit in a, in a closet or a room where you won't be uh, uh, distracted by outside noises or people, and give yourself 10 to 15 minutes. I do it in the dark. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I work, close my eyes and I become aware of the breath, and I breathe in love and exhale, you know, I think fear, I'm holding on to attachments, let it go. And I breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, and I just sit there and do that. And after a while, you become aware of the sense of your entire being and your knowing self, your soul self. And that's when knowing the own self be true, going into those layers of who you truly are. Yeah. And because um, we forget who we are, you know, when we become that program around the age of seven or eight, we forget that thy, thyself and could be to try to please other people. So we really kind of forget who we truly are until we sit and reflect, if you will, or go within just remembering. Who well, we you are. know, it's funny you said that because that pleasing people really. I guess on some level, I think you learn it to protect yourself or to be safe. So if I'm, if I please survival. somebody, I survival. survival. And so yeah. if you, this, what you're talking about, knowing thyself is goes deeper than survival. It's who, who are you? What are you about? Are you compassionate? Are you kind? Are you full of love? Do you have a lot of negativity? Just learn to know who you are and then you can make adjustments where you need to. And everybody, I always say, everybody is like a diamond, and each experience in our life cuts a facet to that diamond. Yeah. And no two diamonds are alike, or it's like a snowflake. Everything, right. Everyone is unique, and you find that uniqueness about yourself, your imprint of who you are in this world, because right. that imprint will change the world if you let it. Absolutely, absolutely. This is a good question too. Sherry Aiken, she says, "Good evening. Do you have any recommendations to reprogram yourself if you've been programmed as a people pleaser?" Oh, I sure do. It's called therapy. <laughs> you go in and you deal with why are you why do you feel you have to please everybody in a certain space? Yep. You kind of come out of all of that. You know, you let go of yeah, all that and go. you don't care anymore. You let go and you yeah. that's but a good therapist will help you. I always say, you know, go to traumahealing.org or even Psychology Today has some great therapists on there too. But that's the place I would start. And, you know, Kelly, what it's saying about that, it's um, you talk about intuition. And it's all those attachments, programs from yep. other people that you put on yourself or they put on you. Yes. And it dirties the self. It becomes yes. like... I always think of pig pen and Charles Schultz comics, you know, is that all that dirt around the debris. When you're not treating yourself, you bring other people's stuff around you. And really when it's cleanse that, open that space up and knowing thyself is really letting that empowerment out and, and being part of who you are and loving who you are, expressing who you are. Well, now, all of that, when you're talking about like the pig pen stuff, all of that actually gets to our intuition. And then you kind of just dummy it down, right? Exactly. And exactly. you don't want to dummy your intuition down. Your intuition is your, I've always said to me, it means into your soul. It's your yeah. soul's expression. It's, right. a, it's sacred. 
And a lot of people I know, because a lot of my students will say, well, I'm afraid about being too sensitive. I'm afraid what other people are going to think of me. You can't oh. because that's, you got to live your life, not someone else's life. What other people think right. of you is none of your business. Right. And you got to be true to your own light, your own intuitive self, because right. your degree of light will reflect, I don't know, I just want to say this, to people that need it. You'll be put in right. positions and spaces that people who need that, your light, your unique light, your unique space. Right. And you'll share that with them. And intuition, like I said earlier, this, the Kelly's talking the soul's voice, the soul's energy. That's what you want to yes. live well, with. Live and that's by. exactly what you want to do. Um, you you want to live that way. Um, right. Let's see. Hold on a second. Okay. I've got a couple of more here for. Okay. And then I have another exercise for people. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> so spend time outside because when you're outside in nature, it's going to really help you with your intuition True. a lot. I had a really interesting experience, James. I was out on the farm. Well, you know, I live on a farm. I was out on the farm you yesterday. I sent you for my peonies are growing. It's just so beautiful. It's picturesque, as you said. It's just right. so beautiful. And I'm out right. there and I actually heard a voice that said, this is why you're here. You're here to connect to nature. And James, I yeah, you know I've never said that to you. I yes. really, I didn't even tell Don. So Don's listening. He's gonna go. You what? I actually heard a voice that said, "You're here to be. You're here to to connect to nature." And at that moment, I started talking to the trees. I started to, you know talking to all the new trees that we have and all everything going on and the flowers and the dogs. And I really I paid attention. Well, Kelly, it's funny you say that because another form of another exercise, if you will, for intuition, which I've learned is when you can become one with this, the plants, the stillness, let's think of it this way. Everything is that prana, the energy of life. And we all share it. It's not like they have a certain prana. We have a certain, no, it's all one source. So if you can tune into the tree, how the tree is feeling, how the leaves are feeling, how the flowers are feeling and what they want. Do they need more water, more sunlight, some food? What is it they want? Just it, well, it, it's amazing how it comes out and it'll take time to develop it. But the more you do it, the stronger it goes. And I'm telling you, I have gardens in my house now. I had nothing but rocks and sand here when I first moved here. And now it's just flourishing gardens because I listen to them speak. I listen to the So instinct. I have to tell you this, James. I have to tell you this. So, you know, I'm, I'm doing a, an event this week on Lemuria and Atlanta. Yes, you are. Right? So the Lemurians were famous for what you just said. They Their souls would go into the plants, into the gardens. I mean, you are such a Lemurian. It's true. <laughs> it's true. I mean, they were so intuitive. They only knew from being intuitive. That, that's how they got around. It was all through intuitiveness. So it's so fascinating. And so and anybody who feels this way or would like to explore being a Lemuria or, it, or we're going to do a Lemuria in Atlantis. And you'd like to explore that with Prajna Avalon and me this Saturday. We are having part one on June 11th. And I think you're going to love it. We're going to do a deep meditation, a deep dive into it. Of who were the Lemurians? Who were the Atlanteans? Where did they come, for, come from? I'll give you a big tip right now. Star seeds. You know how I'm always so fascinated with star seeds I and astrology. Oh, you betcha. You know, and you know I'm going to bring in a lot of information. <laughs> so I please you do a course on star seeds, Kelly. I'm, I'm, after this, I will do a. I promise I'll do another class on star seeds. Extremely wise about star seeds and yeah. I love it. I love it because I know I'm not from here. You're not from here. Oh no, please. I'm not from here. No please. way. Please. Anyway, join I, us. You know, while I'm thinking about it, too, another a great exercise for people to do yeah. and do it where you know you are in your house, in a certain room, do it 10 minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, put a mask over your eyes, blindfold yourself and try okay. to sense as you walk around the room. You know, we do it anyway in the dark sometimes, but now you have your eyes covered and try to sense the energy, the space, how you feel. It really heightens your sensitivity and it heightens the intuition. So I do that a lot with my students. It works really, really well, but you can do that at home and in safety in your bedroom or living room. But yeah, just Oh, that's a great idea. The energy chain the furniture is or where the outside window is because it'll be all different okay. and it helps that intuitive self to grow. And, you listen yes. To yes. Oh, that's a really good one. You know, another thing, James, to do is get off of technology for a period totally. of time. I mean, that would really, really help, oh, help I love you that. to actually just you know knock it off for a period of time. I just take a little a diet away from it. And the, another good one is to draw or doodle. You know, when you when you're a kid, or I just love to have that space where I'm just just doing this and. It's just very relaxing. And then it just opens you up. Oh, see, you've got your doodles too. All over the place. Yeah. I doodle. All Me too. Oh my I'm God. I'm such a doodler. Of course, on the color in the middle of doodling. Oh my. Um, 
<laughs> Speaking of, yes. everybody, let's do an intuitive exercise. Okay. So I want everybody to close their eyes. Okay. And I'm just going to open up the space for you. And that's done, like I said earlier, just with the breath. So I want to get the center space of your intuitive self. So imagine that there's this beautiful golden light above you. There's a sea of gold light all around you, all the space above you. And as you inhale, you're letting yourself receive that golden light into the body. And that golden light is really, a, if you will, a healing light, uh, an inspirational light, a light that brings you truth and awareness and helps you to know thyself. And as you exhale out of your mouth, we're going to just set up the intention of just releasing the old, releasing the old belief systems, old thoughts about who we were, other people's stuff, and just stay centered. So together, let's inhale this beautiful light, the gold light, go all the way down to your feet with it and inhale all the way down to your feet. Let the waves come in and exhale. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Good. And inhale into your heart, into your feet. Feel that golden light ripple through and exhale. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Good. Another time, just inhale and exhale. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Good. And one more time and inhale and exhale. Let it go, let it go. Let it go. And just imagine now that in the center of your being, there is a beautiful spotlight, a beautiful gold light shining out. That light of yours shines out in the center of your being. And that is the center of your knowingness, your intuition, your soul's voice. And just for a moment, place your mind there in your solar plexus area and become familiar with what it feels like, what sense the properties of that space, that center, as best as you can. The size, the feel, the color. How does it sense around you? And now I'm going to introduce, I'm going to introduce a color, a color. And I'm right now sending out a color. Try to feel, intuit the color that I'm sending to you now. I'm just sending it right now. I just sense. I'm going to send it with emotion as well. So feel, sense, intuit the color I'm sending. What does it feel like? What are the characteristics of that color? How can you recognize that color? So it just, what does it feel like? And don't think about it, just feel it. Just imagine just opening up your hands and I'm placing this color into your hands. And it could be an object, that color too. Good. And now just then throw it back into the universe and slowly open up your eyes and be as one. So what did you sense, Kelly? It's going to be a color that's very interesting. I sensed red. Okay. Anybody I else? hot. Red is what I got. Okay. The color was yellow. Oh, it was yellow. Oh. Which was actually right next to a red card. So maybe that's why you uh, Okay. Red, I, I right just kept feeling red around. I almost yellow. went with yellow, by the way. And then I was like, no, I just felt more of the extra heat. Yeah. Oh, that's so it's, interesting. It's, it's, it's another great way, by the way, everybody, of, of really using your intuition and go, using your hands over the colors. And you'll sense and feel the very subtle different vibrations of color, the frequency, because every color is a frequency. And you'll sense it. So, yeah. I, and I, and I, I sense yellow out. And and I because I, I thought everyone would think, something else blue spiritual purple did that for a reason i want to send that the yellow so never think about it just feel it so it's good wow a lot of people love this they yellow they had all different colors here i have all these exercises in my school the psychic portals course i have i have tons of exercises in my jp school of mystical arts which by the way which by the way we're redoing the website and tomorrow will be a brand new school site for everybody oh it's tomorrow the day school. Yeah, right now they've been busy transferring oh, all the students. Oh, congratulations. Today right? is to transfer all the students over. So everybody that's on that site, we're transferring everybody over. So wow. tomorrow, and it's a gorgeous new site and a lot of social media stuff. You don't have to go on YouTube or you don't have to go. You can go on my site and be here for stream yarding. You don't have to go to the, a certain page. You'll have it all there. Oh, this yeah. is so exciting. really hard on everybody. Yeah, it's very exciting. We worked really hard for the past two and a half years to get this all up. And 
running oh and tough. Well, you know, Kelly, you've helped. I, me. I, I, I know it's been a deal, but <laughs> it's going to be an amazing. It's going to be amazing. Wow. It's probably, it's probably, um, you know, it's very funny. When I first started my work on, on the internet, it was dial up. And I had the very first chat room and <laughs> regarding grief and therapy. And oh, the wow. Was dial up. And um, that was the very first chat room on the internet, on the internet about grief, about therapy, grief therapy. Oh my so gosh. Healing grief. My book, Healing Grief, is coming out. And yeah, that was very, very and this is, this website, JV School of Mystical Arts, is also state of the art, brand new. There'll be some things in there. No one has wow. seen before. And I guarantee you within three months, there'll be people that'll change. You know well, I can't wait. I'm so excited to see it. Oh my it's God. It's really cool. It's really cool. Wow. Yeah, this is going to be so exciting. Wow. It's, it's a, and it's the place that, um, you know, when I started with that school, I never really realized it would be a community field, yeah. but it's become this great community. So we knew that it going in like with this new web new website. So I said, let's make the community right there. You don't have to go anywhere. So there'll be ways of talking to each other right, right. there in the in the school. So Suzanne right. says, is this replacing the School of Mystical Arts? No, it's not replacing. It's it. not replacing it. It's just a no. new website. It's the School yeah. of Mystical Arts, and uh, all your emails are the same. Everything's the same. Your student portals will be the same. It'll be, but it'll look different. But it'll be easier for people to use and get around, and, and they can get the class they want. And every class is a world in. Oh. Great descriptions of each class, even more so than was before. So, oh. and you know, keep, you keep track of your classes. It has your own little portfolio thing where you keep track of how many classes you've done, what you haven't done, what this one is about. You can do a whole bunch of stuff on it. So it's okay. really exciting. And um, you know, it's it's just I throw everything into doing this. So that's, that's my legacy, really. That's I know legacy. it is. I know it is. And, <laughs> it, and your classes are amazing. What is the psychic portal class? The psychic portal class is uh, intuition, using your intuition, honoring intuition, and really going through different exercises of when you use the psychic self. Um, there's also a little bit about, I want to say protection, although I don't like the word protection, yeah. but sensing energy of your own, of other people, boundaries. Um, it's, it's all about a lot of sensing exercises there, sensing okay. People, so if people like wanted that. to learn more about intuition, they could take uh, that's the class. It'd be portal. a great class to take for that. Oh, I'm glad you know that. Psychic on a one-on-one course, but I would start with the psychic portals. That's the first one. Okay. The, the, the other psychic certification is great. It's just one step. It's more a little bit more advanced. But psychic portals for the people brand new to this, that's perfect. You get a lot of exercise and learn about your intuition even more. The skill yeah. set. I say it's a skill set. Uh, yeah. Kyle Hodges says, will your Hay House classes be there also? No. This is just my own personal class that I have personally created. And Hay House has um, their own website and their schools. I've not their own school, but, um, you know, their course, the Medium Healer Psychic course that Hay House, I did with Hay House, it's done so well um, that they, they just, we just launched it. did really, really well. I think I'm going to do another one next year because they just, it's oh my one, gosh. Of yeah, one of the top sellers. Oh my gosh. Wow. Well, Renee Hounsel has a question. Hi, Renee. She Hi, says, Renee. When we recognize others from before this lifetime, would that connect as intuition? Is that considered more energetic? Oh, I think it's. Oh, so, so you mean in the physical, now in the physical. So that's very interesting. I, I think that, um, God, if, if, if there's a familiarity, I think it's energetic. I think it's soulful. I think we can't overthink it. It just is. It's just, yeah. I, you sense, I have a friend right now I'm with who I know, and I know we've known each other before, and just you feel a commonality, if you will, yeah. this stuff you just know. Kelly and I, I mean, oh, we connect so immediately. much. So many levels. And we just immediately. Know we understand each other. We don't have yeah. the same thing. We understand each other so well. We just, we can answer each other's questions both the time, too. It's, it's that familiarity, really. What yeah. it is. Oh, absolutely. So this is a good question. This is from Mary S. She says, hi, James and Kelly. I'm a first time ever joining in. Well, hi, Mary S. Hi, Mary S. Welcome. She says, how do you explain radio, TVs, scrambling when I walk by or sit too close? I feel people's energy and moods. Connection. Thank you. <laughs> well, welcome to my world yeah. Uh, yeah you should share a little bit of that kelly because yeah. people marry like for others yeah like, i mean it's your vibration starts to, it's your vibration starts to rise the frequency, frequency. so you're sending it out so it's, yeah it's the frequency so yeah. you're it'll affect everything around you everything around you will kelly used to break pl oh. glasses to fly off the glasses cell, oh kelly. they pop out it was a freaking nightmare <laughs> nobody wanted me around but computers the fire started herself oh, yeah. So, yeah i did start yeah. some fires i had i had some <laughs> issues i did i admit you had to tame it get it grounded you know? i had to get it grounded 
And that's James what she said to her mom. I want to learn film. I want to understand this is James Pond. Yeah. How did you get in touch with it? Because I, I guess I signed the book for you years before. Years before. You and, signed my book? Yes. Um, and talking to heaven, actually. Talking to heaven. Said, James like, is the only one that's going to understand what's happening to me because nobody would understand it. It was just so insane. And just, it just happened to happen to be that it was just, a mutual friend who, you know, we found out. And that's how we met each other. I think I did a first reading for you on the. On, in, in the Mediterranean, when I was on you a were trip. in the Mediterranean, you were on a trip, and you said to me, "You're going to be a medium." And I said, "Well, no, 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 no." And, and he said, "Yes, you're, you're going to be a medium." And I said, "Well, I think I'm doing this business." And he said, "No, you're here to be a medium." And boy, true. Well, you wanted to be a therapist, and you wanted to be yeah. get your doctor. I said, "Well, that's good, but you're going to be a medium." But you're going to be a medium. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll never forget. And now that. we're work as mediumistic, isn't okay. it? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I love that. I love it. But Mary, good luck. And Don't Kelly, worry. your book, your book is doing very well. By the way, I've read like four chapters. I'm doing like it slowly, it? but really great, Kelly. Thanks, I'm not sure buddy. the title yet. So wondering about yeah. the title. James is getting a title for my book, but he's. Yeah. It's a really great book. Oh, really. Good. Thank it, you. It's so different than the first draft. It's just. <laughs> it's really it's like night and day. It's, night and day. It's, what did Linda say? It's, a, it's a, not even a half a book here. <laughs> I think she called me the half a book girl. <laughs> it was very funny. There's so much great information that people can relate to it. I mean, Thank so you. Much. And in fact, the book, what really, Mary, I go into what happened to me and my vibration rising and my kundalini energy getting out of control and all of these things that were happening. So it will help. I feel, yeah. I feel that the book will help a lot of people that have these experiences. Exactly. Because I'm not the only one that has had these no. experiences and no. will continue to happen. So. No, the Jenny Fowler did first time joining us. Some just not have intuitive abilities. No. Or does everybody just need to develop? We all are intuitive. So it's a sixth sense. You wouldn't have survived this long with and not without instinct. So right. instinct, you know, natural instinct growing up, survival as a baby. That's your intuition. So, but when, when people I say with Jenny, people often say that uh, I'm not intuitive. It's because many times they're in their head. They're they're in the left brain, analytical, critical mind, and not the right side. And that's foreign to them. And, and that's where I suggest, you know, there's uh, Julia Cameron, uh, it was a drawing on the right side of the brain. It's a really, really mm. good book. You're forced to do the right side of the brain instead of the left brain. And and left brain to the right brain people and it forces you to change hemispheres and it really is the intuitive self come out but no you just you can easily do it jenny but it's, it's part of who you are yeah it, it, it certainly can oh, a good question there oh penny i don't have the title of my book but as soon as i as soon as james has yet. it it's not <laughs> out yet but it will be thank you everybody <laughs> yes not much crafting on my part i'll tell you i was really <laughs> Beautifully surprised, Kelly. I thought it'd be thank you. I thought I'd have to do a lot of work now. <laughs> I'm so happy. Oh my god, that makes me so happy, James. Oh my gosh. Um there's <laughs> a lot of questions here. <laughs> so okay, let's see here. Um, oh, here's a good question. Jessica Mears, she says, I just got a new job and everything is going well overall. Congratulations. But I noticed I'm feeling a little uncomfortable and uneasy with some of the people I work with. What's the difference between anxiety versus tuning into a vibration of a person? Great question. And how can you um, tell the difference between your ability to read people's energy versus anxiety? Great question. So first you have to figure out, is it me? What are you anxious about? First, you really know thyself. What are you anxious about? You are you anxious because you want to please somebody? Are you are you feeling that maybe they're thinking you're doing something wrong? I mean, think about really get real still with what's going on per individual. OK, before you, um, you know, uh, create something in your mind that may not be happening so, okay. or exactly. You know, you want to, you really want to give it a best shot since so far everything looks like it's going well now, but pay attention because your intuition might be saying that these people are off. <laughs> so I don't want to make you crazy, but first figure out if, what your anxiety is about. And then yes, from right. there, you'll be able to move into the energy of uh, what's the vibration of the person. And feel your way through it. And, and I want to go back to what, what my friend Kay Ray said. We're all think of ourselves as radios, that radio, and we're just tuning in. And whose program are you picking up? If it's not yours, it's someone else's program. So the anxiety might be from somebody else. That Absolutely. You're, that you're picking up their program. So you have to be able to discern between your own self and that that's foreign to you. And the only way you're going to do that is know their own self be true. Get centered with yourself. 
learn who you are, honor that feeling, that sense, and you'll be able to clearly define what your program, what your station you're on, and what's the programs coming at other stations. Right, right. Oh my God, that's so, so true. Um, let's see, Linda Miller, she says, I'm left-handed, but only eating and writing everything else I do with my right hand. Which hand do you guys prefer? Oh, that's How interesting. interesting. I, um, well, it sounds like you can use both hemispheres and I love people that are left and right brain. I think it's really great. Started. It really is something. Um, I'm right-handed. James, are you, you're right-handed too. I'm right-handed, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Oh, well, Lori Rude just said, yes. Are you loving the life you are weaving? I love that, Lori Rude. Yes. Are you loving the life you're weaving? Yeah. I love that because I had years ago near-death experience and I saw a tapestry and I, I would never forget this above everyone's head. I had this awareness that above everyone's head at the crown chakra is, if you will, a light or an energy that bleeds into this tapestry of the human experience. And I believe that when we pass the other side of life, we look back at what we've weaved into that, the colors, the thoughts that we've mm -hmm. had, how we've influenced that tapestry for the humans. And every single person gets a bit of our, our energy. So did you make the world a better place or not? Is the tapestry beautiful colors or is it muddy what? and dark? Yeah, it's very good. Why? I, like that. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. is very good. Um, oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, this is a great one, Kelly. Facebook user. My husband is a professional artist. Also, he's a mining engineer. I love that. Oh, my <laughs> God. He's a mining engineer. That's pretty great. Wow. That's a real, real balance. <laughs> Um, Julie Kitts wants to say, I never heard of tea leaf readers anymore. Do you do tea leaf readings? So, Julie, it's a good question. Number one, a tea leaf reading. I have a great psychic on my website, which is Caroline Mumolo. Just and, thinking of her. Yeah, and she's a great uh, psychic. She's she wonderful. Card readings, and mm -hmm. she's just playing playing decks of cards. Old timer, old timer. So you have to send her, you know, check. And she's a uh, up there. And, um, oh, look, there's her phone number. That's so great. You guys oh, would great. love Carolyn. Oh, she did a fabulous. reading for me. I was floored, actually. She actually picked up too. somebody that had died. I mean, fairly recent. I could not yeah. get over it. No, she was something else. And people say, how do you do it, Carolyn? How do you do it? She said, the cards talk to me. The cards yeah. talk to me. And that's true. So she's extremely intuitive, more of an intuitive than a medium, so more psychic. But yeah. so the cards are a way in, just like tea leaves are a way in. A Kelly, like a right. chart, astrology chart. Absolutely. Destiny, any of that. The knowingness. Mm -hmm. That's crying water. It just weighs into that knowingness and your intuition. Oh, Anne Margaret says she called her and she didn't call her back. That's okay. Just keep, Anne Margaret, call her and leave her a voicemail. I'm sure she'll get yeah, back definitely. to you. She she's, will definitely. She's old fashioned that way. Uh, she's old fashioned. Uh, oh, yeah. Ann said that Carolyn Mumla was amazing. Yeah, she really is. She really is. No one like her that I met, and I've met a lot of people. <laughs> I know. There's nobody like her. She's great. No, She's terrific. No, no, no. Oh, my gosh. So Thanks you've so got well. your, your membership, your uh, mediumship one yes. on June 14th? One, so, yeah, it's a free uh, Zoom call, mediumship seminar, if you will, uh, on Flag Day, June 14th at, at 3 to 4.30. Sign up at vampire.com. And it's really just, it's a free mediumship seminar about mediumship one. I'm going to do more exercises, a little bit of lecture. Um, it'll be fun stuff there and stuff you'll learn by. And if you're just, it's going to be what's part of mediumship one course and launching mediumship one again. And uh, so it'll be part of the course and new things and ideas and two perspectives. So if you're interested, that'll be June 14th and just sign up vampire.com just so we can register. So you'll know, we'll know how many people are there. So I can design exercises accordingly. That's really my. And you have other readings coming up too, I think. I do. There's a VIP June 17th, Friday, Ooh. June 17th. And that's a uh, two hours of uh, messages like Wow. completely going do, 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 do. and you only have a certain amount of tickets for that right I mean, right it's limited limited audience yeah, yeah. Okay. very limited audience under 100 people so wow. it's just it's, and i get a lot of i get to a lot of readings and it's good oh my gosh and please and join us yep join at me and prashna on saturday if you get a chance for this part one um i think it's at 10 a.m pacific time it's when it begins on part one it's and on we, your website Kelly. on my website you can check it out okay Great. i might just jump in i might just watch it oh i wish you would <laughs> I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be talking a lot. There'll be a lot of information that'll be flying. Oh my gosh. And next week, you know what we're doing, James, next week? We're connecting to the higher self. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so join us That's next Monday.
It's gonna be, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna get some really in, in luminous exercises, and Ooh. yeah, it's, it's almost like an elevator. So yeah, we're gonna try some fun stuff next time. I love that, like an elevator. The like higher stuff. I yeah. love that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> thank you. Oh it's gosh, it's like a rooftop and looking over the rooftop, looking down. So there's gonna be different ways into the higher self. We're gonna talk about next Join us next week. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, James, it's always so great to see thanks, you. Kelly. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Kelly. Love you. Love you. Bye, everybody. everybody. Thanks, I'll see you next week. Yeah. See bye you bye. Thursday. I'm on on Thursday, too. Thursday. Check that out. Yes, Kelly, anything. <laughs> Ask me. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. That was great. Maybe we changed some lives. And maybe opened up some minds. Which way do I turn? Uh, right. Uh, I, I mean...